Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by International Coaching Federation Certified Coach, Colin Thompson. Colin has been a coach since 2016. He is the founder of Ology Enterprises Shanghai, a company that focuses on business consulting, training, and coaching. Colin teaches people how to enhance their work and leadership skills personally and professionally. So we're going to be talking to him about all that he does and why he does what he does. So Colin, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Curtis, Curveball. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your audience. And hopefully by the end of this podcast, they'll walk away with a few tips on how to really make some improvements, adjustments um, to their life. Well, I appreciate you from coming on. Tell us, start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. And I assume that you're coming in from China, right? Yeah, I am sitting here in Shanghai, China. I've been in China now for about 14 years. It's um, It's been a tremendous growth opportunity for me. As you mentioned, I got into coaching in 20, actually 2015, when I was working for IBM at the time here in Shanghai. I've always been somebody who is big on motivation, is big on trying to trying to achieve different things, and not myself, but bringing other people along and helping them to, to see things that they want and go after it. I think internally, they saw that energy. So one year, they, on top of my regular role, they also asked me to come in and become an internal coach. They called it Blue Core Coaching. And over the next year, they trained me on how to be a coach. And it was like a light bulb went off. You know, people say a moment. And I said that because, you know, you know, Curtis, if you think about motivating somebody, right? Motivation is great. But I've noticed that some people who reach out to me for motivation, I motivate them on Friday. <laughs> and then, you know, a week later, they need more motivation. The motivation is short-lived unless you really, really buy into what you're trying to accomplish. And I learned that coaching with motivation is a tremendous double whammy. What I mean is, again, motivation is short-lived. You got to sort of keep that fire going. But coaching allows an individual to get the support they need over time to help them maintain the momentum. So from 2016 to now, it's been about six, seven years of coaching. I got to say, I love it. Love it. The fact I'm helping people, it's not the most lucrative (laughs) job at the moment, but it's definitely something that where I feel like I'm giving back and really helping people to really improve their lives. So tell everybody what, what made you move to China and how is coaching or the business culture different than here in the United States? Yeah, so I haven't really taken part in a lot of hands-on coaching in the U.S. I have clients in the U.S., but I'm based here in China, so it's more a remote-type coaching, whereas here in China, I'm doing more face-to-face. But getting back to your question of how I got to China, my parents, well, my parents my, my family are double immigrants. And what I mean by that is my parents start out in this little small, tiny island, you may have heard of it, small, tiny island, very warm, called Jamaica, right? And they immigrated from Jamaica. It was my parents, mother, father, and five of their kids. I wasn't around yet. They immigrated from Jamaica, the nice, small plant of Jamaica, small island, excuse me, to nice, big, and cold Canada. I'm not sure why Canada, but my parents went to Canada and immigrated there. I came out, and a few years later, We immigrated from Canada to the U.S. I think my father, who was always trying to put his family in a better position, felt that Jamaica to Canada is definitely an upgrade, and I agree to that. Then he wanted to say, you know what? I think going from Canada to the U.S. is also an upgrade. We can talk about that, debate that, but but, you know that's where that's where we ended up. So some immigrants, but growing up as immigrant in Canada, inside the house was Jamaica, outside the house was Canada. In the U.S., inside the house was. Jamaica, and a bit of Canada. Outside the house was the U.S. So we always grew up with a lot of different cultures, a lot of different interactions with people from different cultures. My father tried to drive home the fact, you know, 
embrace different cultures and don't just settle in one place. Don't accept one culture as the right way. Now, with that, I always wanted to um, get some experience abroad. Flash forward from 1983 to 2006. 2006, I was just finishing up my master's degree at Howard University, um, HBCU in D.C., and my MBA, excuse me. And I was interviewing with different companies. Now, IT is my background. And one question I had for the companies was, do you have opportunities abroad? A lot of companies said, no, 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 maybe. One company said, yes, <laughs> we can definitely get you abroad. That company was IBM. I joined IBM. And Curtis, people say, why did you choose, Colin, why did you choose China? I tell them. My manager said, Colin, you're going to China. I said, okay. <laughs> Someone made me choose China. I mean, being told I'm going to China. But I knew that once I got out of the U.S., I knew I was going to try to stay for a little while. I planned for a few years, and here it is 14 years later. Well, that's pretty good. So tell us about Ology Enterprises. Tell us how you got that kicked off and what you guys do, your, your mission. Yeah, Chris, I want to go back to finish your previous uh, questions. Sorry about that. Uh, you asked about the difference in coaching. I think that in the U.S., in Europe, coaching is a little more, has been a little more popular. I think about maybe 10, 12 years ago, Oprah Winfrey talked about the importance of coaching. And from there, people were more curious. So if, if in the U.S., you talk about a life coach, people sort of know, know what that means. Here in, in China, not so much because you have a culture here that doesn't really, at the time, didn't really embrace the soft skill side of things, right? It's very technical. You know, you learn math, you learn science, you learn engineering, you learn those hard skills, but you don't pay much attention to the emotional side, the mental health side. So coaching, because here the culture, you don't so much talk about your feelings. Coaching was not well known here. Now you do have a lot of foreigners here who came over here with some sort of idea of what coaching is. But quite frankly, a lot of foreigners who come over here, they need coaching because they're dealing with an entirely new culture. Not like going from the U.S. to Europe, where there's some English, people look like you, but coming to China where things are just so different, especially with how the, how the government is structured. So I want to say over the past five years, there's been a explosion of interest in coaching. So now more people understand what coaching is, including the Chinese. Now, one thing is, I, th I think the reason is a lot of people who know that they need some assistance in improving their mental fitness, improvement in reaching goals, need some improvement in living life by design, they now realize they need help to do that. And what they don't want to do, they don't want to say, you know what, I'm going to a therapist, I'm going to a specialist. Because there's still a stigma, a negative stigma around therapy. I think therapy is great. But people who who are a little shy or don't want to go to a therapist are now opting to go to coaching, which is good and bad. Because if you need a therapist, you need a therapist, not a coach, right? However, at the same time, coaching can help you achieve some goals and improve your life. But it's not therapy. There is a stark difference between coaching and therapy. Okay. Where well, you have a saying, your mind is your best friend, but it can be your worst enemy. So talk about what you mean by that and, and how your mind can sabotage you. Yeah. So let me give an example. Uh, again, your mind can absolutely be your best friend. Your mind can absolutely be your worst enemy. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that for a lot of your audience, it's been both. For all of us, it's been both. What that means is if you, if, if you picture a mini version of yourself sitting on your shoulder and you want to achieve something. Let's say you say to yourself, you know what? I want to, I want to go after this, this, I want, I want to go after a new role at work on your shoulder, on your right side of your shoulder. You may have some mini version of you saying, but you can't do that. You're not smart enough. You don't even get to work on time. Now you failed last time you tried. You can't do that. Right. On the other side, other shoulder, you have another version of yourself saying, yeah, you should go for it. I mean, you got it. You can do it. Go, 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 go. So your mind really can either pump you up for success or pull you down to stay where you are. So you have to really look at what version of me am I really going to lean into, the negative side or the positive side? And quite frankly, a lot of people don't know how to lean into the positive side because They've never built up their mental fitness. So, Curtis, let me ask you a question. If I asked you what is the definition of, of mental fitness, what, what answer would you give? So, Curtis, what is the definition 
of mental fitness? Well, I think it's kind of like physical fitness. You're physically fit, you're healthy, you're mentally fit, your mind is healthy, and you can think clear and and do more versus, I don't want to say mentally sick, but, you know, I would say mentally unfit. Am I close? Yeah. You are, you are 99%. 99%. And what I mean by that is, you know, I was going to follow up by saying, but Chris, what is physical fitness to you? Well, your physical, your body, you're healthy, you're physically fit, or you can be unfit, you know, exactly. have a lot of, a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Exactly, exactly. And I say this because it allows me to give a very good definition of mental fitness. So physical fitness, as you mentioned, this is your physical strength, your ability to, to move around, be healthy. For example, if you were in poor physical fitness and you tried to run two miles, that would be very tough. If you're in great physical fitness, not so tough. You can handle it, maybe breathe a little bit hard, but if you're in poor physical fitness, you can't do that. And to go from poor physical fitness to good physical fitness, you go to the gym, exercise, you build it up over time. Mental fitness is the exact same thing. So mental fitness is our ability to maintain a positive rather than negative mindset as we go through the ups and downs of life. And just like physical fitness, if we try to take on things that are uh, that are too big for us mentally, we can't do that. So we must start with smaller things and learn how to build up our mental fitness muscles over time. If you look at it like going to the gym, day one in the gym, you can't physically lift heavy weights. You got to start light. Build up, build up, build up, build up. And over time, you can lift more. Same thing with mental fitness. If you cannot handle certain aspects of your life, you need to focus on how to build up your mental muscles to be able to handle that. And one of the best things to do is to start with a pet peeve. <laughs> Sometimes pet peeves are little things that bother us, but they're not so emotionally heavy, right? We have childhood traumas and experiences that are very, very heavy. We have relationships with our spouses or coworkers very, very heavy. Don't start there, right? Start building mental fitness up slowly over time, such that six months from now, a year from now, you can then handle the heavier weight, the heavier loads, the more emotionally charged situations. Well, tell us about your company, Ology Enterprises. Tell us about your mission, how you got that started, why you got it started, and why you guys do what you do. Yeah, so Ology Gay Enterprises, um, and I call it a boutique a boutique company because it's company one, me, so very, very, very small. And I got this started because in 2018, my job with IBM moved to Beijing and I didn't move with it. So I had an opportunity to really say to myself, do I want to go to another company or do I want to really go it myself? And with the support of my wife and some good feedback from some friends, I decided now is the perfect time for me to go for some things that I plan on doing, but really never started doing it. And one of that, one of that was really having my own organization where I could uh, do more coaching, do more speaking as well. Now, we also do consulting and training because I'm trained to do that. I have the, I have the skills to do that. And that's what some clients are. So I, I do that as well. That was 2018. It's now four years later, and we're still here. <laughs> we're still here. It's been a great, great, a great trip. You mentioned what is my mission, um, and I don't know what, what, what our mission is. Originally, the mission was to make enough money to stay in business. <laughs> right, that's very, very important. And then it was really how can I help people in different ways. Some people want coaching on how to improve their lives. Some people want training on how to have more skills that are valuable in the workplace. Some clients now, organizational clients, they want insights on how to better prepare their employees for the changes that are coming down in, in the work environment, such as what's the impact of AI, Web3, that sort of thing. I can tell you now that my mission has changed. If I had to, what my mission is, my mission is to really help people be better, be better, do better. The reason being is, as you know, over the last few years, this thing this thing came in called COVID. And COVID is a, a, a terrible, nasty, wonderful, beautiful storm. What I mean is it's caused so many people to have to really make change. And I'm not going to go deep into it, but it gives us opportunity to really make change for the better. People really say, you know what? Life has changed. 
let's go back to, I want to go back to how things were before COVID. And then they realized, wait a second, COVID had a negative impact, but going back to before COVID, my life wasn't the best before COVID. Let me now design my life post-COVID. That's even better than it was before COVID. So for, for a lot of people, they're really looking at what, what's taking place, what happened, as an opportunity to really start designing a better life. And I'm glad to be, hopefully, be a part of that journey with, with those people. So I butchered the name. I apologize. <laughs> so <laughs> Everybody does it the first time. So how, how did you come up with the name of your company to tell us what that name means? It's not oh. ology. <laughs> No, you can pronounce it two ways. Oli guy or Oli gay. O-L-I-G-Y-E. This is a great story. I haven't told in a long time. I went to undergrad at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Again, an HBCU, historically black college university, where I would say 95% of the students are, are black. And coming from growing up in Kentucky and going to D.C. at Howard was a tremendous eye-opening experience for me. I'm very, very proud of that. While at Howard, I pledged fraternity, the first, actually the first black fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, incorporated um, beta chapter. Uh, now, when you pledge, uh, well, when you pledge, you get little nicknames um, when you when you're finished. And one of the nicknames I got was Oli Guy. Reason being, Oli Guy, back in, from what I understand, Oli Guy was a, a wrestler, a trainer, what he, would, what he would do in Africa, when young men went through manhood training, and manhood training was the training they went through in different aspects, hunting, fighting, doing, you know, doing a building, doing different aspects of life that men typically do. And once your training is done, you're no longer a boy. Well, there was one gentleman named Oli Guy who was responsible for teaching the boys how to fight. And back then, it wasn't like fist fight, it was wrestling. At Howard University, I was a four-year four year athlete on the wrestling team. So I got that name because I was a wrestler. Now, the reason I, I used that name in my, my company was because it dawned on me that, you know, although he was a wrestler, he was really training. He was really coaching. So I said, hey, this is a great name to use because it really means you know, someone who coaches, someone who teaches, someone who who um, who trains. So that's the background on how I got the name Holy Guy and applied that to my company name. Okay, so you're certified by the International Coaching Federation. Tell us about that. Well, the, the certification came when I decided when I left IBM and decided to go lean more into coaching. One of the things I wanted to do was to really, really learn the craft. Now, coaching is different from a lot of different industries in that I can call myself a coach without doing any training or going through any training, any, any process. There's no really global certification process that you must go through, which means that you have some coaches out there who really are classically, classically trained. They can still be effective, but they may not be classically trained. I wanted to make sure that I was going through and really understanding how to be the best coach I, I, I could be. So I went through a half year program. At the tail end of that program, you become certified a certified coach. I've also went through, and I'm, I'm also very proud of this. Last year, at the height of COVID, I really saw a lot of folks suffering. Myself and some other coaches here in Shanghai decided to take part in another half year program called Positive Intelligence, which teaches you how to be a positive intelligence coach, how to coach people to improve their mental fitness. So I got certified in that earlier this year. And I think these certifications beyond the paper, because it's not about paper, but the tools that it gave us to really be able to, to, to coach people and be effective quickly was is very valuable. What I mean by that, Curtis, is, you know, well, maybe, maybe we don't know. This year, March, COVID came back to Shanghai. Now, being in China, we all know that, that COVID or, or coronavirus started in China back in you know December, January, 2019, 2020. However, for most of us here in China, it was just on TV, right? We were not in Wuhan. So COVID never really impacted us much here until this year. This year, it finally came here to Shanghai. And that meant that we were on almost three months lockdown. And lockdown, <laughs> lockdown in the US, and here is quite different. Lockdown in the US, you're still going outside, I think. Here in China, you can't leave your house, okay? You can't get outside. I mean, these anywhere. So for a lot of people, it was very different. And one thing you want to do, Curtis, you did not want to catch COVID. Because if you catch COVID, you are taken from your house and you go into a COVID facility, which is 
<laughs> not nice. So due to that, a lot of people were suffering. Myself and other coaches decided, let's volunteer our time in coaching. And over the th- three months time period, we coached over 150 people, gave everybody free coaching, one free session, and which meant that we had one hour, one hour to coach somebody and leave them in a better mindset than when they started. And you have to really be able to use various tools to be effective in such a short time. And luckily, I'm proud to say that we do feel that we add a lot of value to the community here during that time. Well, do you have any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about? I have so many. <laughs> and I don't know which one to share because I'm one, a lot of these, you know, a lot of these are just, you know, one thing, Curtis, in, in addition to my coaching, I'm working on improving my my public speaking ability to continue to build up my speaking side of my business. And so I am looking at designing more timely keynote speeches. Uh, for example, earlier this year, I was part of a IT conference here in China. And the topic was for me was ethical responsibilities in design and development, meaning that how can um, organizations be more ethical when designing their app applications, designing the programs? And to give you a good example of what I mean is most people don't realize how addicted they are to their smartphones. Most people don't realize how dangerous it is to look at your smartphone, the last thing before you go to bed, and the first thing when you wake up. Most people don't realize how addictive social media ap- applications are. And, you know, one thing is educating people on on smart use, because as you know, there is a strong correlation between smartphone use and mental health, social media apps, mental health, especially in our young teens, our young adults. So right now I'm putting together a series of keynote, sp- keynote speeches on that topic. I'm also t- talking on life pillars or your life puzzle and life pillars, life puzzle are more about those four or five aspects of your life that make up your foundation. For example, finances, health, smartness, relationships. What are those four to five pillars or pieces of the puzzle that make up your life that you got that you want to really put your focus in? So right now I'm doing a lot of um, writing, trying to get these various different keynotes ready. So when I do start, I say going on a virtual tour, I'll have good content and good messages to share with the community. But right now, I don't have anything that's ready for the public. Well, what you do have ready for the public is your contact information. So throw out any websites and social media that you talk about so people can stay in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I shouldn't say I don't have anything ready 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 for the public because I do. You're correct. If you go to my site, O-L-I-G-Y-E.com, O-L-I-G-Y-E.com and click on my coaching and positive intelligence, you'll see there a page where you can learn more about positive intelligence program and take, go on there and take an assessment, take a saboteur assessment. I mentioned earlier about you have a mini version of you on your shoulder telling you lies in your ear. Take the assessment to find out which saboteurs are high on your, on your radar and then reach out to me and we're going to have a free absolutely free 30 minute session to talk about those saboteurs and what you can do to start battling and understand better those saboteurs. You can also go to my other site, colincthompson.com, C-O-L-I-N-C-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N.com, colincthompson.com. This is more about my public speaking, my speaking site. So one site is for coaching and training, consulting. The other site is more for my public speaking. So check those sites out, check those sites out, and you should, should very soon see some good content and some good freebies on both of those sites. All right. Close us out with some final thoughts, maybe something that I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about or any any final thoughts you might have for the listeners. Yeah, so, so a couple, and I'll try to be succinct here. We talk about trying to build up a mental fitness and I look at it like this. If you have a pet peeve, something that just that just bothers you, but it's not so heavy. For example, if you get mad if a toilet seat is left up or the microwave door is open, whatever you have a small pet peeve, use that first to try to remove the power from it. Right? Let's say, for example, you get mad that the light is always left on or, or something like that. Instead of getting upset about it, take a different action. The first thing you want to do is say, okay, I'm being triggered again. 
I feel myself getting upset. I feel myself being triggered. Let me one, not be triggered. And let me two, let me take a different action. In my household, for a long time, my wife would leave the microwave door open. And the reason it bothered me was because the light, light's on. If the light's on, to me, we're wasting power. So I would slam the door, say something to make her know I'm, I'm upset, right? After a while, I said, let me try to use my mental fitness to handle this small itty bitty issue. What I, did, what, I, what I did is I really just started to say, you know what? When I turn the corner, if the microwave door is open, don't get triggered, just close it. And once I started doing that, I was like, wow, building up your mental fitness slowly with small things does work. So I then moved on to another pet peeve, another pet peeve, another pet peeve. And soon I was able to build up the muscles to handle bigger and larger issues. So whatever, whatever you, pet peeve you have, try acting different and not giving that pet peeve the power to bother you. Once you're able to, to manage that, move on to another one, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's like building up to run two miles. You have to keep going, keep going. Start with start with <laughs> running around a block, two blocks, three blocks. Each pet peeve becomes another block, but keep doing that until you're able to handle those things that are really impacting you in a negative way. Ladies and gentlemen, Colin C. Thompson. ColinCThompson.com com. check him out. He's really got some great expertise and really is a great coach. Be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. We all need to be strong mentally and work on our mental fitness. Everybody does, and Colin is the man to help. Colin, thank you so much for joining me today. And hey, Curveball Curtis, I appreciate it. Thank you. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.